Have you felt the recent lack of creativity in the Zelda community here on YouTube? Have you ever wondered why Zelda content lacks the same spark it did a few years ago? Have you wondered why the Zelda community... sucks? Here's a hint. It's not because you think Tears of the Kingdom isn't a great game. Today, we're taking you on a journey to explore why we believe the Zelda community on YouTube desperately needs a shift in mindset and perspective. I'm Anthony from Rated N. And I'm Andy from Rated N. And this is Why Zelda YouTube Sucks. The Zelda space on YouTube wasn't always as big as it is today, and much of its growth in recent years can be credited to early pioneers like Zelda Master or Zeltic. But with the surge in popularity during the Breath of the Wild speculation era, and even the years following its release, the community has hit a noticeable rough patch, especially leading up to and following the launch of Tears of the Kingdom. Why is this? Some blame Nintendo, arguing that Tears of the Kingdom simply doesn't hold up in terms of lore when compared to Breath of the Wild. Others suggest that since Tears of the Kingdom is a direct sequel, it was never fated to replicate the same novelty that Breath of the Wild introduced. However, we're proposing a different theory. We believe that the real issue lies within the creators and the lack of fresh perspectives among them. Before we dive deeper, let's take a step back for some context. On October 22nd, 2023, we released a video titled, Zelda's Most Controversial Character. As the thumbnail reveals, it's a video centered on the mystery of the hero Shade from Twilight Princess. Admittedly, our position on the matter was an uncommon one. We tackled the popular fan theory of the Shade being one and the same with the Hero of Time. While we acknowledge that this theory isn't exactly out of the realm of possibility, we argued that, given the lore inconsistencies in the game, and various discrepancies within Hyrule Historia, there's a very valid possibility that the Shade isn't the Hero of Time. Despite our respectful approach, we were inundated with hateful comments that included blatant misinformation, incorrect claims about developer interviews, and insults questioning our intelligence for challenging a widely held belief. The Shade topic is particularly unique because it's deeply cherished by many fans who have even created artwork, fan fiction, and other creative works centered around it. We understand that challenging someone's beliefs can be difficult, and we appreciate the respectful dialogue we've had with those holding differing views. It's perfectly okay to maintain this belief and to even continue to share it. However, our concern is with blatant misinformation or withholding the full truth of the matter, not with personal enjoyment of the theory. The intensity of the negative and hateful reactions to our perspective highlights a larger issue within the Zelda community. Many prominent voices in the community, specifically here on YouTube, seem to have fallen into a sort of hive mind, so to speak. I mean, the editing might be different. The footage they use might be different, although that's a stretch. But they still feel samey. There's a lack of distinctiveness among creators, making it hard to find something unique from one that you couldn't get from the other. This isn't meant as an insult to other creators or an attempt to stir up controversy with those more successful than us. We're simply sharing how it feels from our viewpoint. As folks who've been watching Zelda content for well over a decade, the overall reliance on Hyrule Historia and its successor as the absolute word of God in regards to lore is definitely the major culprit in all this. When everyone is drawing from the same interpretation of the lore, it's no surprise that videos start to feel repetitive. Aonuma himself has noted that Historia is just one interpretation of the lore from the perspective of fans who wrote the book. Furthermore, the encyclopedia, page eight, in the final paragraph, we can read as follows. Where necessary, the writers of this book added their own interpretations and expanded upon the game's stories. It should be noted that the events described here are also subject to revision, as new trials may await the people of Hyrule in ages to come. They f***ed him. They f***ed him. They f***ed him. On a slightly related note, let's not forget that a large creator within our space says that he's only played half of the games, yet understands the lore. First time, first time, sure they must be pretending. No, I am not pretending. So like I was, so yeah, I was uh, talking about this a little bit ago. I have understood Zelda lore from all of the games for a long time, but that doesn't mean I've played them all. 
In fact, there are quite a few. I've probably only played half of the Zelda games. Skyward Sword, yes. Minish Cap, obviously. No, not yet. That's what I'm doing here. Four Swords, no. Ocarina, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Majora's Mask, Majora's Mask yes. Wind Waker, yes. Sand Mirror Glass, yes. Spirit Tracks, no. Um, Twilight Princess, absolutely, of course. Four Swords Adventures, no. Uh, Link to the Past, yes. Link's Awakening. Link's Awakening, yes. Oracle Games, no. Neither of them. A Link Between Worlds, no. The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes, no. The original, no. And Zelda 2, no. This man claimed that Zelda never had seasons. The Legend of Zelda has always had a day-night cycle, or at least ever since Ocarina of Time. But you know what none of the Zelda games have ever had, and I'll get a bit more into this a bit later on. They've never had seasons. These sorts of things only happen when you rely on what's effectively a lore cheat sheet for the series. And somehow, doing it well enough to make it your living for a while. Hey, we respect the hustle though, we respect the hustle though. Well, the view counts don't lie. Even with the decline in interest following the release of Tears of the Kingdom, it's evident that creativity is lacking among some of the biggest voices in the community. Look no further than videos being made on Chris Houlihan Room in the year of 2024. On the topic of Zeltic though, is it not a little strange that he's now making a video about the hero shade? And not only that, but attempting to validate or even challenge Hyrule Historia when that's never really been done before, aside from... To clarify, we're not saying that Zeltic has plagiarized us. It's a popular theory that anyone is allowed to cover. However, what we are saying is, it's a bit odd now that after multiple years of big Zelda YouTubers not touching the topic, it's now worthy of a full-length video from Zeltic? who covers the topic in a strangely similar way to us. He does appear to have ghostly flesh. A closer examination reveals that he actually still possesses a sort of ghostly flesh. Ghostly, ghostly flesh. flesh. His identity is never explicitly lauded by many, and his legacy <laughs> holds a special place in the hearts of fans. A significant portion of our video address why we reject Hyrule Historia as a primary source for the series lore, highlighting issues such as the book's errors and the fact that its writers were fans with no direct involvement in the series. While we approach the Shade Theory with a skeptical mindset, contrasting the in-game lore to Historia's words, Zeltic's video is flipped in the opposite direction, approaching the theory as truth and making a half-hearted effort to verify what information can be found that supports Historia's claim. Despite this alleged attempt to verify the character's identity, the information in the video really seems to fall short of telling the full story. With our video, we laid out nearly every evidence for and against the Shade Theory, and while we suggested it likely wasn't the Hero of Time, we allowed our audience to make the final distinction for themselves with the fresh perspective and information we provided. In contrast, Zeltic goes as far as to entirely omit well-known evidence against the Shade's proposed identity, and still has the audacity to end the video essentially confirming to his audience the canonicity of this theory. One small detail does provide irrefutable evidence for his true identity. But what the hell, but <laughs> I want you to keep in mind yet again that the Historia is only an interpretation of the lore, and not a single person from the staff who worked on Twilight Princess have ever, in an official manner, stated that the Shade is the Hero of Time. Despite encountering some major discrepancies within his video, it really felt like most of them weren't given a second thought, opting rather to continue with his line of thinking, basically saying that it just makes sense for it to be the Hero of Time. He does choose to cover the Shade's samurai concept art, connecting it with the Japanese story of Date Masamune. Somehow, this didn't even seem to give him the slightest bit of intrigue to delve deeper into what seems like an obvious lack of developer intention to make this character the Hero of Time. And again, despite this alleged attempt to verify Historia's claims, he also doesn't even bother to mention that there's a concept art depicting a female shade, or even this section of page 179 in Historia that could be interpreted as contradictory to its earlier assertion, stating that the shade's identity is merely fan theory due to his left-handedness. These are all things that we believe should be covered if you're analyzing this topic in the way you allege. Also, if Celtic did happen to watch our video, and it had even 5% of a bearing on his decision to make his own, it would be basic decency to give a shout out, right? To stay on the topic of Celtic for a bit, but move on from the shade, let's not forget, six months ago, 
he single-handedly had the power to sway a large swath of the community's opinion on Tears of the Kingdom, to encourage more content being produced about the game, but instead decided to make a two hour long video shitting on the game and giving in to the deepest, most toxic pits of the community, echoing the beliefs that the game is $70 DLC. The worst part, the title of the video feels incredibly disingenuous when taking into account this opinion. It really just seems like a facade to preserve your relationship with Nintendo. There are many valid criticisms to say about Tears of the Kingdom, and they are laid out in that video to be true. But just one thing, one tiny, tiny little $70 DLC problem. Leading up to the game's release, and especially after the announcement of the game's higher price tag, people started to call the game $70 DLC. As in, this wasn't truly a new Zelda game, just a giant expansion pack for Breath of the Wild. And now that the game's released, it's clear that, unfortunately, they were right. It's the biggest, greatest expansion pack ever, but it is just that. An expansion, not a sequel. We're not asking Zeltic to suppress or sanitize his opinion on the game. We're simply pointing out that there is an inherent responsibility and influence that you wield when you are a creator of such magnitude. Regardless of the genre you're in or the type of videos you make, you are an influencer. With that being taken into consideration, who in their right mind would actively attempt to seek out or click on a Tears of the Kingdom video when the YouTube Zelda guy is echoing the opinion that it's $70 DLC? It's not illegal to say you don't like the game, like I said earlier. There are many valid criticisms to give the game, but calling it $70 DLC is stupid, foolish, dumb, idiotic, abuse of power. It's been three days since I last recorded these green screens, and um, this shirt is still dirty. I may be Zeltic. In the video, in Zeltic's video that we were that we're talking about, he literally he makes the attempt to criticize Hyrule Historia. Finally, like for the first time, it's like, dude, finally, a a big YouTuber that makes Zelda content is finally criticizing these books and is going out of their way to make an, an effort. And then you go into the comments and bro, you go into the comments, go into the comments and check this out. Check it out. What is this? What, how, how do you do this? How, explain, explain. First, there's this one, which is a complete lie. That is not true. The Deku Tree does not say this. You can see. You can see that here. We'll put that. We'll put that here, or it'll be behind me. Maybe I'm there. Maybe I'm there. Maybe Andy will put me there. But it doesn't say that in the game. But Zelda gives it a, a heart, which is very interesting. And if you do go into the replies of that comment, there is someone that does correct this person and says, "Hey." He doesn't say that. And then you scroll down further and there's the guy that made the original comment and they're like, oh. Oops. <laughs> and you know that because Zeltic, the biggest guy in our space, gave that a heart, that gives many, many, many people justification to take what that guy said as just pure fact. And again, you scroll down a little bit further, and here's another comment, which just completely misinterprets Celtic's video entirely. Like, he literally says, he corrects the quote, okay? He corrects the quote about the Shade's regrets, about how he isn't remembered, which isn't true. And he corrects that in the video. He is remembered as a hero. Like, this is... Everyone knows this. They should know this. If you've played the games, you should know this. And this comment says, the fact. Okay, key word there. The fact that he was not remembered as a hero. And Zeltic gives that comment a heart too. <laughs> 
It's crazy. What? It's like, did you read your own script or do you believe any of the things that you even wrote and that you spoke and you edited and you put together in a video <laughs> for people to watch and consume? Like, it's so strange. And then four comments down. Let's scroll down four more comments, okay? Four more. Just four more. And here's a person who actually interprets the video correctly. Four comments down, and guess what? This comment does not have heart. And you know he, you know he read it. We know we, we, we know you read it. We know you did, come on. Like, what is going on? This is what we mean. This is what we mean. This is literally what we, what we are talking about in this entire video. Setting that all aside though, let's get to the meat and potatoes of why this video is really, well, a thing. Improving the community that we all reside in. What can we all do to improve the community? Firstly, let's reignite that spark and bring creativity back to the Zelda community here on YouTube. As creators, we should move beyond relying solely on Hyrule Astoria or recycling the same theories as throwaway content. We need to encourage a diversity of perspectives and think outside the box. As viewers, let's actively seek out and support new ideas and interpretations. There is a treasure trove of untapped lore and intriguing questions within the Zelda series that hunger exploration beyond conventional narratives. Rekindling that spark also relies on encouraging new voices, and uplifting those smaller creators who are making content in the shadows of our largest voices. The ego issue in this community should be cast aside, and we should value community and collaboration over a selfish mindset and pulling the ladder up behind yourself. It really should go without saying that having your own opinion is completely fine. However, we should also encourage to have more respectful discourse and arguments just take a look at some of the comments what matters is how we express it instead of resorting to hostility let's focus on having thoughtful discussions and exchanging ideas respectfully while still maintaining a facts first approach not only will this approach just be generally better for the community but it will help enrich everyone's understanding of the Zelda games and the lore and history as a whole. There's so much more to the series than just the most popular theories or well-trodden topics, so let's go ahead and explore the more niche topics in the series, digging into obscure lore and characters, analyzing the less played games, or even exploring the cultural impact of Zelda would be a great way to diversify the content we see on our YouTube feeds. Let's push the boundaries of what we cover to keep the content fresh and exciting. Lastly, let's remember to focus on integrity and originality. It's beyond crucial to stay true to your own voice and beliefs. Although it's okay to take inspiration from some of the larger creators like Zeltic, Nintendo Black Crisis, Bandit, I think that we should focus more on bringing our own unique perspectives to the community. New theories, new ideas, because that is what's going to help improve not only your channel, but everyone else's channels and help everything grow all together. And if you are inspired by somebody, especially someone with a lesser subscriber count than you, maybe give them a shout out. Authenticity isn't something that's praised enough, so we should be sure to be true to ourselves to resonate with our viewers and build a more genuine connection to the community we reside in. By embracing these principles, we can make big strides towards bringing back the magic of Zelda here on YouTube. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Um, if you found this discussion valuable, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up and share your thoughts about the community in the comments below. Also, go check out all of our other content. Watch the shade video. Watch the shade video. It's really good. If you think we missed the mark, let us know in the comments below or if we nailed the issue. But yeah. Let's work together to create a Zelda community that's as unique and magical as the series itself. With that being said, I'm Anthony from Rated N. And I'm Andy from Rated N. Until next time, keep it Rated N.